Hello ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, my name is Brad. This is my channel Animate Orange where I build a lot of 3D metal models and show you how I do it. Today on the table, the gondola car from the gift freight train gift box set. If you haven't seen the locomotive video yet where I opened this box and started on the locomotive, basically I've already opened this up. There's the locomotive and four different cars. It's a long build, so basically what I've done is I'm going to give each car or locomotive its own video. I've already built the locomotive, so now let's move on to what's next, and that's the gondola car, which is right behind it. Let's real quick look inside of this again and get started on that gondola car. I want to make a little bit of an assumption here. If you're watching this video, then you have at the very least shown an interest in building this entire freight train set and have probably seen the first video where I go over a little bit of how the instructions work. Quite possibly this isn't your first build, so you are already somewhat familiar with the directions. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time going over the directions themselves. We're just going to go straight to the second page. If you haven't already seen the freight train build, the instructions for building the gondola basically start on page eh, 7 and 8. So we're just going to focus on page 7 and 8 of the directions for the diesel locomotive and the gondola because all of this is for the locomotive and I've done that already. So we're just going to focus on 7 and 8. Let's talk about some tools real quick. Let's take a moment to talk about the tools that I use. This is my standard set that I use in most every build. I have long needle nose pliers and flat nose pliers useful for a variety of different things. I have flush clippers that I use to cut the parts off the trees. It makes it quick and easy. And then I have some precision tweezers, one with a very pointed end, one that's had the pointed end ground down slightly, and one with a flat sort of curved end great for getting into curved areas. And then I have a standard set of tweezers with an angled tip. These come in one of the Iconics models and I love them and use them a lot. When it comes to shaping rounded parts, there are many options. I used dowel rods for a long time. I sharpened the ends of two of them with a pencil sharpener. These two are great for making cone shapes. Another option is a cheap drill bit set. The set has quite a few different sizes to choose from. Another option is a set of step mandrels. I don't use these very often, but they sometimes come in quite handy. They're angled needle nose pliers, and I typically use them for one of two reasons. Either getting into a strange shaped area to twist a tab because of the angle. More frequently though, I use them to fold over flaps along bases or side of parts that are too long for the flat nose pliers, but needle nose pliers can't get to them safely without bending or warping something else. These will grab a longer area and bend it over. I've got some basic tools to get me started. Again, we're just worried about page 7 and 8, and I'm going to pull out what's left of the part sheets and put together a gondola. Much like the locomotive, we start by making the wheels. This time, I'm going to build and shape both sets together. Part 31 curves so small that it really takes the use of pliers to squeeze the part around the drill bit. It's too small to effectively and completely curve using just my fingers.
It's always a good idea to double check what you're doing as you're going along. I realized I had attached part 31 to the non-engraved side of part 30 when I was supposed to attach 31 to the engraved side of 30. Shaping the little wheels is a pretty simple and repetitive process. Part 33 took some slow, careful bending.
To make the curve of the hook here, I use the slightly ground down tweezers that I have to bend a little at a time moving down the flap following the curve. As for the shorter rear piece, I just kind of pushed it over after everything else was folded and in place. For me, getting the tabs holding the wheel assembly on into their slots was kind of a tight fit. There's a tip at the top of page 8 stating that you can lightly twist the tabs holding the sides together and later come back and fold those tabs over for a cleaner look, which is exactly what I plan on doing. I slightly bent these tabs here pointing straight out to make them slightly easier to get into their slots. I tried to start bending tabs at this point, but things were not quite stable enough yet.
And now to go back and fold over and clean up those tabs as best I can. Be careful folding over the tabs at the top, careful that you don't accidentally warp that top cover out of shape. Part two, the gondola car. A little bit of a loose article hauler. It's all finished, done. And this did not take as long as the locomotive. And that's kind of to be expected. I figured the locomotive would be the most complicated so far that's, or the longest, and so far that's proven to be correct. This build took just over an hour, just barely over an hour to put together most of that was putting together the wheels and some of the bottom part. Once you get past that, the rest of it almost seems to fly together really quick and then you're done. Still though, fun build. I'm enjoying it. I'm loving having this tiny little train piece in my hand to go with the locomotive and there's more to come. So kind of like this build, I'm gonna keep this short. There's more to come, pay attention or pay, stay tuned as they used to say, not that this is TV anymore. There's more videos to come. As always, thank you for watching. If you enjoy these build videos, consider becoming a Patreon supporter. Give them just a little bit if you can spare it. You don't have to, but give it a thought. As always, thank you for watching, and keep on keeping on.